An essential worker is someone that is responsible for the well-being of others. And they are there to support uh, the community and getting them the services or products they need to essentially live. So I think an essential worker would have to be somebody that is providing a basic service that we need that uh, for whatever reason just can't stop. So that would be somebody from that works in healthcare industry all the way to transportation. It's a privilege to be able to to be in that category because this way we are part of the solution and we're working towards assisting and making life easy for those that are at home. For those of us in the working in a hospital setting that wasn't very new, we just uh, a little bit more aware and doing it a little bit more often, but um, it has always been part of us, right? So my kids know, for instance, when I come back, they are not to touch me, I have to get my clothes off, I have to wash my hands. And so that has translated to them, right? So they're very aware of uh, the things they need to be doing. It made us as uh, employees appreciate the customers a little bit more as well because we get to put a smile on their face every morning and, you know, lift up their day just by like giving them a cup of coffee. Pepsi, there's uh, protocols that we have to follow. Uh, certain grocery stores require us to wear masks. There's constant sanitation. Uh, we at Pepsi, they've provided us colorful, colorful vests that say, please stay six feet away from me. Um, all those little things um, have become above and beyond our daily routine. To be honest with you, all of the frontliners, whether they be in healthcare, grocery stores, know that they are an essential service, uh, fire, fireman, policeman, or policewoman, police person. Um, all of those people, they should be congratulated every day, not just during this. Now people are noticing them, right? But I don't think we do it because we want to get noticed. We do it because we chose the job that we we have. The community is rallying. The fact that there are people who um, they're taking their time and they're they're delivering groceries to senior citizens, or they're um, delivering Tylenol to someone who has a sick baby, like stuff like that. Like those little things are the biggest things. I think my daughter made one of the signs you were referring to, and she posted it on the front door, and it reads something like this: "You will be fine." So I think we'll be fine after this. Good evening and welcome to City News. Dangerous and selfish, those are the words city officials use to describe the behavior of many Torontonians today. The beautiful weather brought out many outdoors now that parks in the city have reopened, but it appears some were not following physical distancing guidelines. Many others, I was disappointed and frankly saddened by what I saw. Please stay two meters apart, that is the requirement. We have to do better. How could you have that on your conscience that uh, you passed COVID to, onto someone else, you may have, have been okay and survived, but then that other individual now gets sick, passes it on to their family and extended family, and then maybe maybe somebody in that family lineage now, you know, doesn't make it and passes on. You know, it'd be, it's devastating, right? It comes down to common sense, and I guess some people are just not using their common sense. I think they, those people that were in the park knew exactly what they were doing. Um, I know it's a difficult thing, but at the end of it, 
if the message was out there, I think people would have, at least some of the people would have listened. It wouldn't have been as large scale as it was with people yeah. openly violating social distancing rules. And we need to understand that we got to keep our distance and to keep everybody safe. They have to remember that they have parents, they have grandparents, and and they, they put them at risk as well. So we all need to uh, follow that, the protocol.